Hello and welcome to another session of FCI Markets Healthy Trading Habits. Today we're going to talk about efficient time management. But before we start, please take note of the risk warning. Our investment products and services are not suitable for everyone. It is possible to lose all or part of your investment. For leveraged products trading, it is possible to lose more than your initial deposit. Trading on margin carries a higher level of risk and it is possible to be required to deposit additional funds. You should not invest money you cannot afford to lose. And with that said and done, you already know me. Um, my story, I've been on the retail side of the foreign exchange market for most of my career until I recently uh, graduated and moved into the institutional space, sending directional calls to institutional clients and becoming head of trader development here at FCI Markets. I have probably made every mistake in the book twice, so I'm trying to give you the lessons that I've learned over the years that have helped me survive because I believe we all go through the same challenges when we are attempting to trade and become consistent traders. So the end result of all of this and all the education that we put out here at FCI Markets is directed at helping you become a professional trader and make the leap from being a retail trader to being professional, making your money from trading and receiving capital allocations from our funding partners. So as a testimony to that, you can come onto our site, go on to fci-markets.co.uk slash funding, and you can check it out for yourself. You can register your interest, open an account, start trading, start building a track record, because there are always opportunities for passionate and consistent traders. But to become a consistent trader, there are some tips and tricks that we can, uh, that we can give you to try and keep you out of trouble. Today, in particular, we're going to talk about efficient time management. What I've seen as a trading coach helping traders throughout the years is that many start out well, but then they get addicted, they get too caught up in the markets, and they start trying to fit their day into their trading habits. And that's not really what should happen especially when you're beginning, especially when you're still building a track record. It needs to be your trading that fits into your day and not the other way around. I have heard traders, and I've, I've helped traders that actually got into trouble at work because they were spending too much time staring at their screens or, or sneaking uh, glances at their smartphones. Um, I know traders that also... Uh, had issues in their personal life with family because uh, they were dedicating too much time to their trading and not enough to their family. What this means is that each one of us is different and it doesn't matter whether the guy next door has eight hours to stare at his screens every day because he works from home or because he's a business manager and he has that free time. Each one of us has a different personal situation and we need to make trading work for us independently from what other people think or do. Okay, It has to be personal. And the markets are there and they can provide whatever opportunities you need because the markets just are. They just exist. They're a discounting mechanism. So you can create your own trading model based around your needs. It's important for you to actually understand that because you can create whatever you want. You can create the structure that you want. You don't have to use somebody else's structure. You don't have to trade like somebody else. You can create your own success in the market. So how do you determine your objectives and your style and you know, how to build your trading system based around uh, your requirements? Well, number one, you need to know when you can dedicate uninterrupted time to the markets. Okay, and this usually has to do with your day job. So when is it that your day job allows you time? Is it in the morning because you have a late start? Is it in the evening when you come home from work? Is it during the day? Or if you work from home, you might have a bit more flexibility and you might be able to uh, trade a higher frequency 
uh, system. But this really needs to be the, the starting point. You need to ask yourself, when can you dedicate uninterrupted time to the markets? Uh, a couple of examples. I've always been more of a, of a morning person, so I prefer to do most of my work in the mornings. Um, but I also helped a trader from Australia who would isolate himself after work and he, did, he concentrated and he would dedicate one complete hour to his trading after work. He would close his door and his family knew that, that was his trading hour. And he had an intraday system, a very short-term system, that he would deploy during that hour. And if there were opportunities, he would take them. If there weren't, there, was no, there were no trades. But at least he had a very defined segment that he was using, that he cut out of his day, that was dedicated to trading. And whether you use one approach or the other, whether you need to take a wider stance and trade um, multi-day or use daily charts, or whether you prefer to concentrate on intraday short-term opportunities during a very precise time during your day, the important thing to understand is that you are focusing on the market. You are not distracted. It has to be a time when you can really sit down at your screens and concentrate. I do not believe in trading from a smartphone. I do not believe in trading on the go, especially if you want to become a funded trader through FCI markets. Uh, you really need to demonstrate accountability, responsibility, and sound risk-taking. And risking hard-earned money on the bus or in the car, uh, trading from your smartphone, isn't exactly the way to prove this. So, whatever time of day you can, it has to be a, a time you can focus on the market and you're not interrupted. Then you have to decide how much time you can actually dedicate to the markets. Because, for example, the trader down from Australia, he could dedicate an entire hour out of his day. But perhaps you don't have an hour. Perhaps your your routines and, and your work and your family, they just take up a lot of time. And so your time will be curtailed and you need to have a more efficient way of looking at the markets. Lower frequency, of course, perhaps longer time frames. But you can still do it. Trading is not something that you need to abandon simply because you only have half hour a day or you know 20 minutes per day. It can be done within certain constraints. And then you also have to think about your capitalization level because in my experience, most traders uh, come to the markets with very small budgets and they try to force trades and they try to leverage their positions up because they think they need to grow their account fast. They need to, uh, or, or they just try and become rich in the short term and they martingale their position size and they go down all the wrong avenues, essentially trying to force things. Uh, I want you to know that you don't have to do that and that is actually the worst thing you can do. What we want to see at FCI Markets is a more responsible risk taker. So always trade within your means. Okay, If you have a small account, it doesn't matter. As long as you are thinking in percentage terms and you are risking, a constant percentage of that account, okay, usually half a percent, a quarter of a percent, but if your account size is small, that might not be possible, but risk 1%, try not to risk more than 1% on each trade, because it's not about how much you make or how fast you compound the account, it's about how much you lose. And any funding partner will say the same thing. It is all about downside protection. It's all about not getting into large drawdowns, not having the big volatility in your equity, but having consistent gains over time. So even if you have a small account, it doesn't matter. Focus on percentage returns and focus on sizing your positions correctly. Now, if you have a small account, you will be trading a, l a lower number of instruments uh, simply because you don't have the capital to actually throw in the market and diversify. 
but that's okay. All you do is you pick out the best trading opportunities based on your system and only execute those. And that's all we need to see. Diligent, efficient risk taking within your capitalization levels because here at FCI Markets we can fund you so that you don't have any capitalization problems but first you need to prove that you are a good risk taker by using your own funds okay so that's why uh, going back to this structure so your time availability your capitalization they will dictate your objectives whether intraday or multi-day or anything in between so shorter term or longer term they will dictate your trade management how often you can check your charts and adjust your trades adjust your stop loss and your trade frequency because lower capitalization levels obviously require a lower trade frequency because you can't have 10 positions in the market if you are risking you know 1% to 1.5% on each trade that's a bit too much portfolio heat so think about this brainstorm it and decide on what you can do and what your objectives uh, should be the second thing I'd like to talk about is a biologically functional daily routine because a lot of traders that I talk to tend to force things into the day they tend to force trading into their day and it might work for a season but eventually they get run down and um, they, they go into burnout so what I have learned to do is to feed them a routine that works uh, from a biological perspective it's what our bodies like um, it doesn't work for everybody in every situation uh, it doesn't really matter you know pick out the things that you can apply to your situation and accept the fact that you can't apply everything and that no single situation is perfect we just have to work with what we have but here is what our bodies like and here is what I do as often as possible so you have to start with a morning ritual okay and the morning ritual means waking up having the time to actually wake up in bed without having to rush so wake up have a moment of gratitude a moment of mindfulness but just become aware of the fact that you're waking up and don't jump out of bed second thing to do is in this morning ritual is to wake up the body so I like to go for, for early morning uh, brisk walks or jogs if it's raining outside or if I don't have any anything else to do or if I'm not quite up to par with my energy levels a yoga routine or something soft but I need to wake up the body before I actually wake up the mind and actually jump into the markets okay then the second thing to do is breakfast so many people skip breakfast but breakfast is the most important meal of the day because after a night without any uh, nutrition your body is running low on, on sugar on energy levels on nutrients and so charging it up in the morning is one of the best things you can do because it, it sets the tone for the rest of your day and I always try to make time for breakfast and not eat it in front of screens or eat it on the run I always try to be mindful and take my time for breakfast then comes the the concentration work the creative work you know this is the moment of the day when our bodies are ready the body and mind are best prepared for you know concentrated work or creative work uh, things that aren't routine so if you have to do any of that kind of work then in the mornings after breakfast is the best time for most people then after this slot before lunch take a break you know uh, you need to you need to wind down uh, the engine a little bit and take your mind off your work bring your mind to a halt with a bit of mindfulness or at least relaxing or you know just changing gears for a moment because then you sit down for lunch and you have your lunch and again lunch is best eaten 
in a mindful way, not in front of screens, not being distracted, uh, not on the go as often as possible. Then in the afternoons, okay, we're going from more intense to less intense. Okay, so the most intense time of your day should be this, this morning slot. And then as the day progresses, you should be calming down. So task-based work in the evenings, you know, in the afternoons and evenings, connectivity, so emails, phone calls, whatever you have to do, that is better done in the afternoons. And then after you work, some free time for yourself. If you, uh, again, you know, if you have to do any meditation or you do a brisk walk, you do your shopping, uh, time with family, and then you have your dinner. And then the evening ritual. Now, for an evening ritual, I personally like to recap my day. I keep a journal um, and I basically recap any important lessons from the day, things that I'm grateful for, uh, things that I've learned, um, anything else. I prepare my the day, I prepare for the next day. And in the evenings, even though you know it's nice to watch a movie in the evenings or it's nice to um, you know turn on the TV or watch some Netflix, whatever you like to do, I would suggest not doing it right up to the time you go to bed because it has been demonstrated how screens affect our sleeping patterns. So, and the other thing is don't watch, you know, um, like thrillers or horror movies or anything like that before you go to bed. It doesn't help, uh, you know, it doesn't help your sleeping habits because the concept of going from more intense to less intense during the day is the fact that you're able to sleep well and recharge and recover. So don't do, you know, stuff that adds tension right before you go to bed. Uh, the other thing I would suggest is not eating a heavy meal in the evenings because during the nighttime when we're sleeping is when our body is recovering, it is repairing everything, and it is building up for the next day. If it's if it's weighed down by a heavy meal during the evenings, it it's fatigued and all those processes are curtailed. So within this curve, going from more intense to less intense, where can you fit your trading into this, into this structure? Where does your trading fit in? Um, you know, it might fit in in the morning uh, between breakfast and, and going to work. It might fit in between your morning ritual Okay, when your body and mind are, are, are awake and your breakfast, or it might fit in after your morning, uh, your morning work, uh, when you're taking a break or just before lunch, or it might uh, fit in during your free time during the evening. But you know, definitely don't do it as soon as you wake up. Definitely don't do it right before you go to bed, and try not to do it when you're eating because you know you're you're taking energy away from your body and you know, whenever we eat we should be mindful um, and it's better to segment our activities during the day especially especially trading so th these are the things to avoid you know don't force things don't try and force trading into your day um, you don't have you don't have to trade each and every day so trade when you can and when you can not simply accept the fact that you know you're trading around a day job and for now, your day job is paying the bills. It's allowing you to explore trading. It's allowing you to build up your trading habits. Always wake up the body before the mind. Okay, don't wake up the mind before the body. It doesn't work. You will deplete your energy levels so quickly if you jump onto your screens right out of bed or if you try and you, you, you go for deep concentration before the body is, is actually alert. Um, that's why I like to take brisk walks or, or jogs in the morning. To wake up the whole body and the mind wakes up as well. Um, you know, I try not to watch the markets while I'm eating, and I try not to watch the markets right before bed or to trade at night because uh, it it doesn't help sleeping patterns. So this is generally what I would avoid. And here are a few things to remember. Now, I'd like to remind you that now trading is stressful, and it's less stressful if you have a day job, it's less stressful if you don't have to pay the bills with your trading. And I always suggest keeping the pressure off and not getting to that kind of situation. But in any case, stress is cumulative. Um, there are so many situations that I have, um, you know, that I've faced, even myself, where you can, 
you can go for extended periods of time with, with high pressure, uh, high demanding activities, but at a certain point your body will, will just stop you. It will make you pay. And in trading, when you start seeing, when you start experiencing burnout, your your trading results suffer tremendously. So again, it's best to work smart and not hard. So since stress is cumulative, what is it that stresses us? Well, work definitely stresses us. Trading stresses us. Exercise, so physical exercise, is a stress for the body, even though you do produce, especially like with aerobic activity, um, you do produce certain hormones that help the body, and certainly in a healthy body is better than a sedentary body. You have to keep in mind that exercise is a stress. So if you are, you know, if the energy demands are coming from hard work and trading and exercise, which, you know, and then trading adds emotional stress, um, there could be also mental stress from some other aspects of your life. You know, you can't keep experiencing, you know, pressure from all, uh, from all segments. Otherwise, you know, your body will, will simply give up and you definitely won't trade well, but other aspects of your life will start to uh, be impacted as well. So the smart thing to do is recognize when you have a hard day at work, perhaps, you know, don't go and do your normal training in the gym, do something that's lighter and, you know, and, and make sure that you don't stress yourself out at the, on the markets because, you know, you're already pretty stressed. And so that will impact how you view the markets and your objectivity. So always be aware of this. And the reason why having a biologically functional daily routine helps is because we need to recover. Okay, these are the things that deplete our energy levels. These are the things that help us recover. And we need recovery time. We need to sleep well. We need to eat well. We need to rest. Okay, rest, relaxation, doing just doing nothing or hobbies. And we need contact with nature in any form. Gardening, walks in nature, um, you know, trips. We need these things in order to recover. And I guess the suggestion is, you know, be aware of this. And work smart, not hard. Okay, don't don't think of it in terms of the uh, you know no pain no gain. You have to work smart because life is complex. Trading is is an added uh, is an added stress if we want to talk about you know the kinds of uh, the kinds of things that deplete our energy levels. So you just need to work really smart. So you need to be efficient and don't spread yourself too thin across all these things. And there will always be opportunities available for capable traders. Okay, here at FCI, I continue to repeat myself, we have funding capacities for capable traders. Okay, you do not need to think that you need to trade your own account and grow your own account and, you know, oversize your positions and uh, take on too much risk. Uh, be a diligent risk taker. Now, if we talk about solid trading principles to to use, you know, if you don't have a system or if you haven't reached that kind of consistency that you want to see, then you know we have a whole bunch of resources that you can access. The one thing to remember is that most people do the wrong things. This is a an example I like to uh, I just like to put out there often. Uh, this is retail positioning. This was the euro dollar uh, during its upswing. Uh, look at retail positioning. Constantly short in aggregate. Well, the market is in an uptrend. So, you know, come to us to understand what the better things to do are so that you can be on the opposite side of these guys. You, know, you don't want to be short in an uptrend, for example. In order to work smart, in order to be efficient in your trading, in order to fit your trading into your day in a simple fashion, you need to have a solid system that you know, like the back of your hand. So build your system thinking about the big picture, intermarket connections, what to trade and why, your entry conditions, your position size, and how you're going to manage your trade. And then it's wash, rinse, and repeat. The more you think in terms of process, the less you're going to have to actually make decisions, so the less energy you spend on your trading and so the more efficient you become because it is a routine it becomes routine and that is where you need to get especially if you're trading around a day job 
and you don't have much time. You know, you need to you need to work smart. You need to be efficient. So, coming to a conclusion here, if you're just starting out in your trading career and you don't yet have a system or you don't know where to go, um, come and take our free course. You know, go to fcrmarkets.co.uk slash promotions slash free course. Uh, these are 12 lessons that are sent directly to your inbox. Um, they could go into your spam box as well, so just be careful. But we have condensed 15 years of trading experience into this course. So if you're looking for ideas, if you don't know where to start, you know, come over and just subscribe to our free course. But if you need a system, you've been trading for a while, you haven't had the results that you need, then we also have the Professional Trader Academy. Uh, I teach in the Professional Trader Academy. It's an interactive environment. Um, I offer coaching support in there. And, you know, that is where we give you everything you need, all the knowledge you need with, you know, uh, videos, webinars, uh, constant email support. That is where you can become a consistent trader in the shortest amount of time. So whether it's through the free course or whether it's through the academy, we have a solution for you. If you have any questions or concerns, please get in touch with us. Okay, you can write to client.support at fci-markets.co.uk or give us a call at our number. And if you are living in the UK, you can also drop by directly and pay a visit to our offices. You know, we are happy to hear from you. We're happy to help you because we are successful only if you are successful. So, you know, we're on the same team here. Okay, I hope this video was useful. I look forward to hearing from you. And for the moment, good luck in your trading. This is Justin Paolini for FCI Markets, over and out.